Eh, lo... Ok. <coughs> So let's uh, welcome this Monday. I hope you had a nice weekend. Um, okay, so first, we are going to continue today on this um, subsea compression topic. But just maybe to make a, you know, so, such that we remember where we were. We. Uh, we were going to solve uh, the Snow White problem with now considering compression subsea compression. We already said or mentioned that boosting basically we have less available pressure than what we require, right? So we have to make bridge that difference by giving energy to the fluid and that we can make for some cases with boosting, okay? And boosting can be three types, we didn't discuss that, but we can have dry gas, we can have liquid or we can have multiphase. Okay, we are going to cover here in the course uh, gas, we are covering now. Later we are going to talk about liquid. And, um, and multiphase won't be covered, but you know, it's basically the same principle. That's the configuration we are looking at, okay, that the provider has, has given us, and it's actually based on the OSCAR, the only dry gas subsequent compression <coughs> Uh, project that is um, and I will show you some images and I think we had a guest lecture right um, a guy from uh, Equinor that presented this project okay but I will show you like how the system looks like but we essentially said and if I want you to keep or or remember something from these lectures it will be that for choke you simply can find almost any way to bridge that difference okay can be if it's too big the delta p you can make two chokes in parallel you can buy a bigger choke smaller choke you can make some adjustment to break that energy down okay and you might think that we are now entering into this new environmental phase of the industry that we want to make pro process more efficient that's a way that we can actually try to get it's a lot of energy that we are burning here okay from high pressure to low pressure so any of you interested in uh, kind of recovering energy or making the, 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 the industry more efficient, actually looking at the delta P across the choke and how can we recover that energy or how can we use that energy, that's kind of a, a good way to start. Okay? I had a student working on that a few years back. Okay, but essentially when we have a booster or when we want to give energy to the fluid, Simply, it's not enough to say, I need this Q and this delta P. You, production engineer, uh, fix it, okay? It's not, it's, not, it's not enough. We have a certain, certain constraints, okay? Usually, the equipment has a maximum delta P. Very important, we have some power constraints. If, like in a pump, okay, the, the power comes, is a, is a relationship between rate, between delta P and efficiency. Okay. If the efficiency is very poor, is very low, this number will be very high. Okay. If the rate is very high, also this will be very high. Or if the delta P is very high, also the power will be very high. Okay. So that's something we have to work with. And we have some machinery already installed many places around the world that tells me I have some limitation in the size of this motor. Okay. If I find that I need a pump of 20 megawatts, it's not going to happen. Okay. You don't have that power um, anywhere in the world okay but we can have um, we can put we are going to talk a bit about that now we could have machines in, in parallel right we can split the rate if the rate is too high for example we can simply split the rate and have several machines working at the same time okay but that might be expensive because you need to install each one of these machines, you have to ma maintain each one of these machines, you have to control each one of these machines, so it, the complexity of the system grows, okay? But that can be done in principle. Also, if the delta P is too high, you can decide if to do it in, in also in series. You can increase first the pressure and then you, you increase it in the second compressor or second pump, okay? But remember, this is increasing every time I have it's like the saying, right? I have one child, 
one problem I have two child two kids mul multiple problems okay it's not they are not proportion okay Mm -hmm. uh, there is one also minimum suction pressure we have to maintain a minimum suction pressure to um, yeah for some ceiling uh, requirements I want to balance the loads I, th I think actually here I brought you this is not actually from a compressor but it's from a pump okay, which uses liquid and you see the same configuration, we have a rotor, that is, we have an axis here, and this is rotating. And this is accelerating the fluid. The fluid enters through the center, through this ring that you have here. It goes through the passage and then comes out, okay? It's accelerated, it's gaining energy through the rotor, through the change in radius. And then after that enters this second element, which is fixed, and this is the diffuser, okay? That's where it enters and it has a channel which actually is like that, okay? Such that you enter at high speed and then you expand it, you diffuse it, and then you increase the pressure and reduce the velocity, okay? It's not exactly the same as a compressor, but it's the same principle. You have impeller, stutter, impeller, stutter, and then enter through here and through the next stage, okay? We're going to talk a bit more later about ESPs. But it's also very important to keep that the equipment has some limitations. It's not that I have that combination, but I actually, you know, I, I need also to fulfill some constraints. There is another thing that is called the operational map, and that's what we're going to talk today. I hope it's, you know, you don't get too confused. And that depends, of course, on the equipment. Okay, so that is like at a later stage. If you're saying how much I will get from a booster, you can use some of these things, okay, some of these constraints, because to calculate uh, temperature, for example, you just need to assume a polytropic efficiency, right? And you know the range more or less is between what numbers. To calculate the power, you need also an efficiency, which you can also assume, okay? But for the map, to see if it falls inside the map or not, you need actually a vendor. Okay, that gives you, is proposing an equipment. Comes uh, any company, for example, Baker Hughes, comes uh, Slumberger, they say, we think this is the best equipment for your operation. Okay. And then you have to verify actually if that equipment works or not. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, today. Okay, so you have done this last time and, and uh, I have actually improved a bit the Excel sheet, so I put a, uploaded a new version on my website because there are some things there were not exactly... The, the procedure was completely okay, but the thing was the structure of the spreadsheet, okay? So I did some VBA function, the one I programmed last class, and also I changed a bit the structure of the, of the sheet. And then we went to this chart, which is of thermodynamic properties, okay, of methane, which instead of going to a calculator like HiSys, like uh, something to generate these properties, I have everything on the chart, everything that I need. So I don't have to do any computation. And I told you we, that was the inlet. We were doing this analysis, I think, for year three, okay, delta P of 22 bar. And we said we want to get to this pressure, okay? Starting from this pressure <coughs> and this temperature, we want to get to this pressure. I told you the most efficient way to do it is using the isoentropy line because we don't have any friction, any reversibilities, nothing non-ideal that is happening there, and I go from here to here, okay? And I told you actually the real process is like the green, you will have a higher temperature at the outlet and how far away it is, it tells you something about how inefficient it is, okay? If I increase too much the temperature of the fluid, that means that I'm using most of the energy not to compress, okay? But I'm using part of that energy to heat up the fluid, which is not what I want. A compressor is not, is like, is, is like uh, the main objective is to increase pressure, is not to increase temperature, okay? For that, I use a heat exchange. Yeah, and I told you, uh, well, these equations that you thought you were never see them again, actually, we, we need them. And I told you a way to estimate the outlet temperature. It's uh, using this equation with this polytropic exponent that represents the efficiency. 
of the of the process. Yeah, what units of temperature do I have to use here? Okay, absolute. We keep it in mind. Okay, and I told you that that I think we didn't that I told you instead of using polytropic exponent, we typically use the polytropic efficiency and the polytropic exponent is 1 over 1 minus k minus 1 divided by k thing is minus let me just check so it's, it's times right I think Well, it's essentially this equation that is 2.47. Okay. And that's the K is the C CPU over CV, right? And it's a property of the gas. Okay. Specific heat of at constant pressure and specific heat of constant volume this k and simply why do we use that because we and we really don't know it's a number that doesn't tell me much it's 1.5 1.6 1.3 you know that it when it grows right it separates from k that means that it's more inefficient okay but the polytropic efficiency you know it's a number has to be between 0 and 1 so you can really relate that very quickly with an inefficient or efficient process okay these numbers for a compressor might be something between 0.6 all the way to 0.8, maybe if it's extremely efficient, but typically something between okay, point in that range. Okay, 0.8 might be too too efficient, but that's those are the numbers. Okay, and then from there I clear uh, n, okay, and then I'm able to find my my pressure, my temperature. Okay, this is minus, I think. Yeah, K minus. Okay. Now, also, another thing I want to call to, uh, to your attention. It's... Where it is? If you have the chart, okay, you can look at it, and we are going. I'm going to just show you something. Um, if you don't have the chart, there are still some there in the front. Okay. So what happens? Remember that we have in our configuration that I showed you before, the configuration we are considering. We have a cooler. Okay. What is actually the function of the cooler at the inlet? Like, if we don't know anything else about the system, why do we want to cool that stream, that temperature at the inlet of the compressor? Why to go all the bother? Okay, that equipment, the cooler, is uh, heavy, you will see now it's big, it's expensive, I have to install it, I have to maintain it, might be a source of, you know, leakage. So why to have a cooler in the first place? Okay. One thing is, I told you we... If the temperature is too high at the outlet, right, then we might have some problems with the the integrity of seals. We have a problem with the hydrate inhibitor that we inject further here. Also, the material, the pipeline, right, can have a, a temperature rating. So, if I reduce that temperature, I should also reduce this one, right? Because, you know, remember the relationship between those two temperatures? That equation, T out, T in, RP.
okay, over n. Therefore, if I reduce this guy, also the T out will be reduced, right? So that's that's one reason why to have a cooler because I reduce one. But also, I want you to notice something that, for example, our point last time was what was the the starting point? The starting um, pressure and temperature. Okay, 67, 56.7. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It will be someplace here. And was it someplace there? I lost it. Okay, and I had to go all the way to. Um, 70 something, right? 79, 6, 7. I had to go to this pressure, right? This is pressure out, and this is the pressure at the inlet. Okay. What do you see on these entropy lines? What happens when we reduce the temperature? If, if let's say we have here 100, 150, what happens when we go to a lower, to a lower temperature? Hmm? Yeah, you see, it start to become a bit more vertical, right? These entropy entropy lines. Here, for example, they are much more vertical than they are here. Okay. So, what happens if I manage to cool that? I'm still at the same pros and the same pressure. But I managed to cool that point, let's say, down to here. It's becoming the, the isoentropy, right, is becoming more vertical. It's becoming more and more. That means that the temperature, the outlet temperature, is going to be lower, right? Okay? If I, instead of starting with this temperature, I start with this temperature, or much lower, let's say, to put an extreme temperature here okay this line will be not so not so inclined okay? it will be much more vertical okay and what te what happens then with the required compression power okay is it's reducing here it was maybe this size and here is becoming much smaller okay because of this trend that the lines have that that they become a bit more vertical so the whole the whole story here is to say that lower inlet temperatures require less uh, less energy for the same delta p okay that also is, that's one very big incentive to reduce the temperature at the inlet. If I reduce it, because the lines, they go a bit like that, it requires less energy. Okay, and less energy, what we say here, is this delta H, del delta enthalpy. Okay. Simply because of the fluid. Because thermodynamically, the fluid says, uh, it's much easier for me to be compressed at low pressures than at high pressure. Th to low temperature than high temperature. Okay, and you can see somehow that in these lines here they become very very vertical. Okay, the isoentropy lines, and here they become very very inclined. Okay, so it's less in a way it's less efficient to compress the gas at high temperature. Okay. Okay, so before uh, what I had now. Uh, remaining okay that I think maybe you can try we can try that you will work on it but basically we want to estimate power required compression power okay we use a big P a fancy P and um, 
for that you already know how to do it from the chart right you need the efficiency of the machine but you already know more or less how to do it from the chart we are going to use an equation okay and the equation is is in the compendium is 252 okay instead of you looking into the chart I just give you an equation which is a bit approximated but still good enough for our calculations okay <laughs> so the equation is 252 which is HP we will see now what is HP but it's called polytropic head okay remember like pumps we don't say the chart delta p versus q okay we use something called head right in pumps so let's put it here in pumps the head okay is simply the delta p of the pump divided by the density that correct is it only by density no it's by by g right Okay, so in compressors we have something called polytropic head, which is something similar. Okay, is representing the delta p, but it's actually making it dimensionless. Okay, and in compressor it's actually very important. In a pump, the density is constant throughout the machine. Okay, in compressor this density is changing. Okay, so it's, it's not exactly the same, but it's the same principle. In meters, we multiply times g. Then we multiply times the mass rate, flow rate, divided by the polytropic efficiency and the mechanical efficiency. Okay, mechanical, this G is simply 9.81 <coughs> square seconds. Okay, this polytropic efficiency, already told you, um, is simply describing the process and mechanical efficiency is due to the friction okay that you have in the axis you have a lot of rotating equipment and with this rotation you have a lot of friction losses okay and this mechanical efficiency it's can be something between 95 to 99 percent or 98 percent okay now hp in a very simplistic way is defined as not simplistic, but ideal, or, or using uh, an approximation, S is defined as the T absolute units, remember, C average, and C average is the inlet plus the outlet divided by two. R, and this R is the universal gas constant divided by the molecular weight n n minus one and you have rp n minus one minus one and all of that g divided by g okay it's a way to approximate exactly what we did in the in the chart okay we take n find the end point and simply see the difference between them okay it's simply a way using equations to approximate that 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 um, like kind of den delta enthalpy okay so these are if we do if we check the the, the exercise it opens Okay, I have added here this equation that I was programming last class that was not there. Okay, I think that it's nice to have it. Then you have this polytropic exponent from the polytropic efficiency and K, the expression I just wrote now. This polytropic head, okay, that's exactly the same expression that I'm writing uh, 
here and the power consumption okay so that's the equation that we are going to use to estimate how much power this compressor this compressor needs okay now one thing why also I want to use power based on HP okay one last thing and then we I show you how the real compressor looks like and then you you are going to try to do some work okay also the operation map The operation map of the compressor is typically given in terms of HP and Q at the inlet. Okay, so this Q is actual. Okay, is a volumetric rate at the inlet of the compressor. Okay, so that's why also I tell you we are going to calculate this HP because we use it for power and we also use it to see if it fits inside the map okay and typically it looks something like like this you have different lines for different rpms okay so here you have what i call n one and n2 and n is rotational speed okay so those of you who are familiar a bit with pumps okay it actually has the same behavior it's like i have a limited amount of energy at that rotational speed i can even have a big delta p okay, a big pressure ratio you see the equation hp has a pressure ratio so if i need a big delta p i can only give you a small rate or I can give you a big rate with a very low delta P. Okay, so essentially that's what is this curve is representing. It's, you cannot have both. You cannot have big rate and big delta P. Either big delta P, low rate, or big rate and low delta P. And when I increase the rotational speed, simply I can cover a larger range of... of um, okay. And we are going to see how our points fall into that map. Okay, and that map you have it if you go to the Excel sheet that I sent you, you have it is plot HP of the compressor. It looks very bad. We have to reduce the size. Okay, but you see here the lines, that's the HP, you have the lines at different RPMs, and usually RPMs are mentioned like 70%, 110% N design, okay, which is like, if I want to achieve maximum efficiency, I should operate at N design, okay. But sometimes I need to change, you see now that we need to change at just this RPM, just to get our combination of delta P and rate and then we can achieve different efficiencies but essentially it are these lines that we have here okay one thing that also i have to mention is that this map is is uh, measured okay you measure in the lab okay you put your equipment on a bench and you measure it in the lab these curves okay but it's usually generated with certain gas okay that means certain molecular weight okay it's also generated for a certain inlet pressure and inlet temperature okay, and certain gas that has molecular weight and K okay typically they do the test not with methane because then it will be expensive right you have to make it explosion proof you have to store the methane you have to say what do you do with the methane how do you recover the methane after it, after it is compressed so it's not typically simply done with air right 
typically this fluid is air and also you don't have like in our case we know the suction pressure will be 70 80 bar okay but they how do you need then a pre-compressor to compress just to measure your compressor right or you need um, so special it becomes starts to get very complicated so this P in typically can be atmospheric okay sometimes they use they increase a bit the pressure but sometimes can be atmospheric and this temperature it can be T ambient okay like 20 or 15 degrees so that means we are testing our compressor we are making our map not to the actual conditions that I'm going to be using it, okay? So, let, let's put here uh, the test conditions are typically not equal to the actual operating conditions. Okay, especially not the gas also, okay? We say the inlet conditions, but also not the gas. The gas won't be air, but will be methane, will be a heavier gas because it has heavy components, okay? Well, it won't be the same. So therefore, we need to convert, therefore, it is necessary to convert from test conditions to actual conditions. Okay. That means you get the map from the manufacturer, measure at their factory with some conditions, and then you have to convert that map to your actual conditions. Okay, to see how it how it performs, and usually there is a difference. Okay, and you use these equations. The equations that we are going to use are given in is equation 250 and 251 of the compendium. Okay, those are the equations that we use to convert, and it's very important for gas. For liquid, the viscosity we'll see now. Viscosity has some effect, but actually we don't need to correct for anything else because we're assuming compressible. But for gas, it's very important. So Q nu, okay, or the actual test, will be the Q at the test. That means each point that I have here, I converted the Q separately, the square root of K nu, K test, times the square root of molecular weight of test, molecular weight of the new point times square root of temperature temperature in which units okay absolute always absolute right remember you had to do some re repeating some brainwashing this weekend And the HP corresponding to that point, for example, you have here one Q and then you have one HP. That's how you convert each each of these two coordinates. Okay. K okay, test. Molecular weight test. Molecular weight new. Temperature new and temperature test. Okay? Simply a way to convert your map to the actual conditions that I have. Okay. However, for our case, for our case, we are going to do something different. Because we have this cooler, right? If you remember our our um, is here okay we have this inlet cooler so the inlet temperature can actually change every year right our fluid won't change but the the this temperature we don't know if but maybe it will change every year depending if we use the cooler or not so a way to do it instead of having maps for every year i'm just saying we're going to convert the actual condition to test conditions okay so we're going, going to use the equation 
this equation, instead of having our test points computed to the new, we're going to calculate our new point and convert it to the test. Okay, so we're going to use the equation in a different way. We're going to say we will convert the operational point to the compressor test conditions. And when we do that, we just need one map, right? Because we are saying like if that point was operating at with air and was operating at, you know, uh, 1.01 and 15 and 20 degrees Celsius. Okay? It's simply a trick. We, we don't want to get the actual map, but simply we are going to plot everything on the same map. Okay? And then we can plot all the points can be on this map. Okay? okay, so we have simply here to clear HP test. Our HP actual that we have which is this one, that's the one we are going to calculate. We have to multiply times k test, k nu, molecular weight nu, molecular weight test, t test divided by t nu. Okay. So we have to use the equation uh, and the same thing with the rate. Okay. Q test q nu. And these two equations are also programmed in Excel for you, so you have to um, okay. So they are programmed here. The test equivalent, okay. I call it the test equivalent of the actual point is actually that equation. Okay, should be the same if we I didn't make any mistake. The actual. Okay, which is the t, t test divided by t test, okay, molecular weight test. Okay, so it's actually that that equation. Okay. Okay, so before you go, so what I have made in the Excel sheet, and and I think I I think you we take a break and then you guys work on it. Okay. I think you have to do it yourself, yourselves, but you have, so I first, just to give you, I change a bit here, this part, this layout, is exactly the same that we had, but now I added a choke, we have a choke, you see at the inlet of the compressor, so I say that choke initially will be zero, okay, and simply I hear this number is the available pressure at the suction of the compressor, that was here to the left. Okay, is this uh, P plem available? Okay, so this number will be this number minus the delta P of the at the choke. Okay, and we see now why do we need this delta P? You you can see that the delta P at during the first years is very small. Okay, and the and the HP has a minimum point. So we are going to see when we plot the point that we don't get inside this envelope. With that delta P that we need, it's simply too small to be inside the envelope, okay? So that's why I artificially choke it, remove some energy such that it enters into the flow map of the compressor, okay? Okay, so I have uh, P compressor discharge, how do I calculate that? Simply that's the required pressure at the plem, right? I calculate with line P1 and from the separator, and you see it's constant. If I want to produce in plateau rate, that should be constant, okay? T at the plem, that's the temperature at which I reach at the suction of the compressor, but then we have a cooler, okay? Which is, is what, what I have here, I have this cooler. 
So you say how much delta T I'm losing in the cooler, okay? How much that is managed to cool. And then I have the suction of the compressor. Then I have the RP. And then I have, I give this polytropic efficiency. I calculate the N and I calculate the T at the discharge. All of this we have done last, last lecture, okay? And then we have the outlet cooler and we have the T inlet to the pipeline. Okay, and that's what I told you has to be less than 140, I think, in, is in the, the exercise. Okay, so now we have for each year, we have um, the C suction, C discharge. This is to calculate the C average, right, that we need for the power, for the HP. We have, we need to calculate the local rate at the inlet of the compressor. Okay, and for that we're going to use this BG that I'm going to explain what it is after the break. We calculate the HP with the equation provided. We calculate the mass flow. I think we already mentioned how to calculate. You need the standard conditions flow rate, the standard conditions density, and from there we calculate the power. We have M, we have HP, we have the efficiency, okay? And then we calculate, we have the HP and the rate at the actual conditions, and then we calculate at these fictitious, we convert it to a fictitious test conditions. Okay? And then we plot these two points in the map and see how they fall in this in this map. Okay? So that's what you have to do now in this next part. So you wake up, okay? And you actually don't say, okay, I understand, and now I'm going to check that you understand. Okay? But let's take a break first, 15 minutes, and uh, yeah, and then you work on, on the exercise. Uh, let me just mention this BG. Okay, I guess many of you already know what it is, but simply this factor relating the local rate or local volume and standard condition volume. Okay, uh, and then if I have that's the rate that I'm using, right? The standard condition rate, and simply I calculate the local rate at the inlet of the compressor. That has to be at the inlet. Okay, is the standard condition is the standard condition rate times this BG. Can you have an equation for that BG? In the PVT part, it's called BG and it requires temperature, pressure, and set. Okay, and this set has to be the set at the suction. Okay, at the location, pressure at the suction, temperature of the suction, and set at the suction. Okay, so be careful that you have to pick the right, uh, the inlet of the compressor will be here, T suction, the P at the inlet of the compressor, it's here, okay, and the set at the inlet of the compressor will be here, okay, to calculate your BG. Then I want to show you some figures very quickly of uh, the project. How it looks like in Oscar is already installed, it's running. I think it was installed 2015. Uh, so you have the inlet of the main, uh, that will be the, the suction at the plem, where you merge all the fluids. Then you have this inlet cooler, okay, which it's here. That's how the inlet cooler looks like. It's a kind of a monster. Then you have the scrubber because here you have wet gas, it comes with some liquid, it comes with water, it comes with condensate, so you have to use that like a separator, that you separate the fluids, and you take the gas separately, compress it, and then the liquid also, you take it on a pump, increase the pressure, and then you simply merge them after this cooler. <coughs> okay? So it's exactly the same that we were looking at, but a bit more complex. You have other um, yeah. so yeah maybe that's something worth mentioning in this region if you try to operate too much to the left this region you have what is called the search line okay that I'm going to paint in red And that usually you don't want to operate there because then you have like flow going back and forth. Okay, it's a 
very have you heard about search before no yes okay but it's a typical where the flow simply starts to oscillate okay you start to have flow in one direction then flow out of the suction okay which is a bit a bit weird okay so to do that to avoid that issue they what they do they put this anti search line and that means when the flow to the compressor is too low then they simply take part of that flow and recycle it so artificially it it it's high okay when in reality it's low here it will be low here it will be low but artificially by doing this recycle you're keeping it high okay such that you don't enter into search especially during a uh, startup okay and to the right you have what is called um, you can have stalling on this part here if you increase too much and that's when the fluid starts to go that very very fast and it achieves sonic velocity at the throat of these blades okay you achieve sonic velocity in the passage in blade passage that's And there are some compressors that they operate, but remember, when you have sonic velocity, you have this choke wave, okay? So you have a big change, this continuity <coughs> in, in pressure. So you can have that if you go from supersonic to subsonic. So you have to design your compressor to take that into account. If not, simply you cannot go further than that. It's like that's the maximum speed it, it can give. Okay? Yeah, so that's the system how is that's how it looks like uh, so you see here you have the cooler you have the scrubber then af after the scrubber you have this compressor and where do we have the anti search line I think it's this guy here I think it's this line here coming back and entering into the cooler Okay, you have the discharge cooler, which is much smaller than this cooler, and you have the pump. Here is the pump. Okay, it's a monster. It's a monster installation. In our case, we are making a simplified. We just have the cooler, the two coolers, and the compressor because we don't have any liquid. Okay. Something else I wanted to show you: some just presentations from. That's the cooler. Okay, and it's based on free convection. If you have here, what does it mean this power that you have for the cooler? That tells you 11 megawatt. What does it say? Oh, what does it mean? Power we know can be a compressor and a pump, but what does it mean to have a duty? They call it duty. It's essentially the same thing, right? Simply it's a Q, okay, called cooler duty. Okay, we apply the energy equation. Q will be equal to mass flow H inlet minus H outlet, right? So you have the temperature, which was 67 and you have the pressure and then you can from there you can calculate you have a fixed Q for example 11 megawatts and you know how much what is the H outlet that you can get right is is the same thing you make a, f a balance but now in the cooler okay before we were making a balance in the compressor an energy balance but now we're making a balance in this cooler and in the compressor we had a work where we had some power that was coming out of this control volume okay, or coming in in that case but in the cooler what we have is simply heat put it in blue okay but we have exactly the same balance okay so we say if this cooler is able to remove 11 megawatts and we have our 20 and 67 then we can calculate how much what is the h at the output 
Okay? Maybe it might be a question for the exam, I don't know. Okay, but just that we know what what you know what does it mean. Uh, so it's a passive cooler, doesn't have any force, that means that you don't have any anything any thing forcing the fluid through the pipes. You have a bunch of pipes that increase the surface area and you have a lot of uh, heat transfer throughout all of this area. Uh, but then you have simply with the current and they have some walls simply to make it more efficient, okay? To try to direct the current such that it goes in one direction. They say it's more efficient than to have this kind of disorganized flow of, of, uh, of the water, okay? Not much to see here. Here's how the cooler looks like. Initial design, final design. There was one here. Yeah. So we have two parallel trains in this case. Okay, the flow rate, Oscar, you see is quite similar to what we are using. So the Snow White will be similar, probably similar to Oscar. You have two compressors of 11.5. That's what the exercise says. Okay, that's why we took that number. We have two compressor that they have their own cooler, their own scrubber, everything. Uh, yeah, that's how it looks like. And that's more on the cooler that you have the problem of distribution. If you see this cooler, it's actually having multiphase flow. It's having the liquid and the gas. Okay, so you might have some problems that the liquid go only to one branch because you have a lot of parallel pipes. Okay, so they were doing some studies in the lab just to see how was the distribution of flow throughout each one of the pipes. Okay. Which is very important for single phase, you don't have this issue, but for multi phase, it becomes very important because the branches that have filled with liquid, they won't dissipate that much heat compared to the other branches. Okay. How it looks like. Then let's see, and that's more on the compressor. The compressor is from Mann, a German company, and uh, this is the model that they're using Hofim. They have different models, two compressors on one side, the motor in the center, one compressor to the side, that's what Oscar is using, and you have this which is, um, I think this is um, uh, some other design, uh, Mopico. Okay, and they even have here in their brochure, they have one uh, uh, reference to, to Osgard, okay? 11.5 megawatts. Okay, so we are going to be working because it's very similar, the two systems, I'm not sure about the pressures, but we are going to be working on an assumption that is the same, we could use the same compressor, okay? The same type of compressor. Okay, so now just work on it. I give you some time and I will be just, if to answer yeah. questions, but basically, Calculate, you already have these two, pressure and temperature at the suction, pressure and temperature at the discharge. So you calculate the set. After that, you calculate the rate at the inlet. Okay? And after that rate, you calculate a polytropic head, which I gave you the equation. You have the VBA function. The mass flow, remember, doesn't matter where you calculate. Mass flow should be constant throughout the system. So this I recommend to use the standard condition rate, field rate, and the standard condition density. Be careful with the units, you need it in seconds. Uh, power, we have the equation that is using these two guys and the polytropic efficiency. And these two, they are, you're just converting this HP and this Q to the test conditions, okay? Because we want to use the test map to plot these two guys. Okay, so you have an equation also for that. And, and from there we see how it falls on the plot, okay, this point. We want to see this HP and Q, how do they fall on the plot, how much power do we need, and if we have to do any adjustment to put both the points inside the map, okay, or just to make, um, just to fulfill the power constraint. Clear, more or less? Okay, so just work, you can work in teams, and I can just, you know, help you, you if you have any question, okay?